Well, welcome to the, uh, the the final show of July, George. Can can you believe we're saying that? This summer has just kind of flew right back. Here, here, huh? here we go, another uh, beautiful Thursday night out here uh -huh. in downtown Rainier. Are, are we on the suburbs of Rainier? No, we're, we're, we're in Rainier. We're, we're, we are probably, <laughs> what we say, about 150 yards from Rainy River. Yeah, and, that, that's, um, that's a good estimate. Yeah, and that's a historic Rainy River. That There's been people hanging around that point for a long time. Yeah, probably longer years. than we think about. Oh yes, that's yeah. right. A longer, but they they discover they discover relics over there all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's been a good week. Uh, it's we, been an incredible week. I'm going to say this, and 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 no, don't if if things start going wrong, don't blame it on me. But I was looking at my yard today, and and things are starting to get a little a little crispy, a little fried. <laughs> we could use a little water. <laughs> That's for sure. Notice we didn't say the R word because we're, we're not going to get ourselves into trouble there. But uh, no, hey. it's getting dry, and I, I mean, I, I I walk the dogs over across the river, and and you can tell just by looking at the banks and seeing how the trees yeah. are reacting and stuff like that. But and I have seen it very dry over there. But that's a it's a nice place to determine whether or not you need need a little R. Yeah, and we do. A absolutely. We could yeah. we, we could use a shot there. Yes. Every, you know, every and I, I think we're supposed to get some possibly, but we'll see what happens. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to start talking? Oh uh, well, I tell you what, we can go baseball. We oh. can go. Uh, we can go lots of ways. We can go lots of ways. Yeah. Ah, let's start with the twins. Let's start. Hey, I'll tell you what. I last week, I sat with my grandsons and we watched the first game, and we were sitting in the living room and they threw up the first pitch. And old Max give her a belt, and, and Alex and I looked at each other, and we jumped up in the air, and we started rattling, and here we go, here we go. And then, and then Max liked that so well, the next time he got up, he did it again. Yeah, it was, it, it was kind of funny because when the game started on Friday night, we were just kind of sitting down to eat supper. And so we were, I was whatever, and I was bringing a plate in for Eli, and I did not want to miss the first pitch. Yeah. But he was hungry. And also you're like, what am I going to do? And I walked into the dining room and I turned like this and the ball went boom and I, the camera, you know how the camera takes off when uh -huh. it's a home run type ball. Uh -huh. And I'm like, get out of here. And he just about, <laughs> Eli just about jumped out of his chair and had a coronary. And then when he did it the second time, I screamed just as loud and uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty exciting. Unfortunately for Max, after he hit two home runs, he went over his next his next Well, round. you know, and and, and I mean, I, I there is not what's more exciting than hitting the first pitch for a home run. Yeah, that's, uh, you that's know, pretty, and so, that's pretty cool. But uh, the fact of it is, is that, and, and I've, 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 I have my opinion from other um, uh, uh, journalists and sports guys, but maybe he shouldn't be a leadoff hitter. Um, just yeah, what, there, there was an article, I think, in the Minneapolis yeah. paper today, and I did not read it because I didn't want to be skewed. Any, uh, yeah, I think Luis Arias is, is is our leadoff hitter. He, I he, think he is. I, so. I, he he's very selective. He always gets on base. It's nothing against Garver or At Mitch all. or uh, Max or uh, any of those guys. Uh, I just think Arias is the is the right guy. Very interesting that he had Donaldson batting two. It did. It was um, yes. Donaldson had a little rough start and then kind of came around a little bit. But uh, one thing I've noticed about Donaldson is, and, and this was after they beat St. Louis, I think, on Tuesday night. Everybody else was high-fiving and arm-bumping and whatever else, and Donaldson was just kind of standing there like he didn't have a friend on the team. And I'm kind of like, is he is he still trying to find his his way? Still, still trying to be a twin. Still trying to find that way, and and uh, that's the that's the tough thing about well, what, I'll tell what you we're what, going through right now. Batting in the order that he is right now, I mean, there are rifles all around him, yeah. and they, they there is they can't avoid him. They can't walk him. They have to pitch to him. I think that in the big picture, he's going to be just fine. Yeah. Oh, and I it's think just, so too. And just... you know, he's 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 got a nice long-reaching swing. On the other hand. Nelson Cruz has that short little comeback thing. You don't even know where that swing half the time is coming from. He just ticks the ball a little bit and it goes 400 feet. It's uh, yeah. Cruz had a nice day on uh, Sunday in the uh, final game of the White Sox uh, series. Couple home runs, a couple of doubles, uh, seven RBIs, four runs scored. Uh, that's that's a week. Well, he had that nice. You know, when you have a bases loaded double, boy, that has a tendency to get your RBI average up, and 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 he was just he was just hitting the ball well. And for this, you know, this early for him to be picking up, and 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 the, as the rumor says, uh, Miguel Sano is he he's starting to get his timing a little bit better, and uh, 
you know, that lineup, you take a look as, as a pitcher and you think, you know, where are the gaps? You, uh, there, are there are no gaps. gaps. There are no gaps. No, and as long as they have the designated hitter rule, we have the designated hitter. Yeah, exactly. Buxton came back in the lineup on Tuesday. Cave uh, sat down after Cave hit a grand slam. Kind of scary. You can hit a grand slam in a game and kind of be overshadowed because Cruz went for seven RBIs. But uh, Buxton came back and then had that home run ball that he should have taken away that hit him in the uh, hit him on the wrist and bounced over the fence. So eh, not not the way Byron wanted uh, things to go. But, no, you know. it's it, it isn't. And boy, he you know he's 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 been a little bit unlucky. The last couple of years for injuries and this well, and that. Well, somebody but, uh, said at least he didn't slam himself into the wall and then be done for the season. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. So they exactly. had that. Very interesting stat uh, that was tweeted out last night and was brought up today in the in the paper. But the Twins, for the first time in their history, had three pitchers make their debut for the Twins and get wins in back to back ga back to back to back games. Excuse me. So that was a pretty cool. It's only the third time it's ever happened since 1906. Well, you know, and, and, and we were all a little bit hesitant because we didn't know about Hill, and, and I, kn I knew about Homer. And I mean, well, we were, I was a little scared. Yeah, I got to admit. What a first name for a pitcher. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's just, it, it, you know, and, and, but I also knew that he, he was really capable of a lot of stuff. And he goes in there, and that's the key. That I, in my mind, that the Twins have been successful this last week because of Nelson Cruz's incredible swing, um, and, and the fact that um, that all their pitchers have done really well. Yeah. And you know, they're the only team in the American League that has not committed any errors. I did not know that. That's, yeah. that's, that's and I looked at that and I thought, oh, defensive baseball. I've heard of that. <laughs> Well, they 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 have uh, played well. They got four games with uh, Cleveland coming up here. Uh, this will be a big series. These everybody are no thought, gimmies. Everybody everybody thought that Chicago was going to be the big series because Chicago was going to make the make their rounds. This Cleveland series is four games, and we'll uh, we'll find out how everybody does the second time around. And uh, yeah, so a good good start for the Twins. Oh, I I, I think this Cleveland series is going to be good for them. You know, they got a great pitching staff, and. Um, uh, and in fact, I think, I think they have a, a, a kid on the uh, in, in the bullpen. Well, he might have got beat up the other day. But this is his hand from Traska. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he came out yesterday, and he had a nice lead, and they, and 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 they, belted him around pretty good. So, but the, it's nice to see these young guys. Uh, Cleveland's got a heck of a pitching staff. Um, they can come in and get hot and and leave those. But we've got the Bombas, Tim. The Bombas are going to be ever-present. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no doubt about that. And so the, the Twins are, are sitting in with some uh, with, with a great start, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, the Miami Marlins, you wanna you wanna take a swipe at well, that? Well, you know th th that's a perfect example if you take a look how the contagions sp spread. Well, they spread because you have this amount of people involved and they have this amount of people involved and so on and so on and so forth. I think it's absolutely amazing uh, and n just I mean you're talking about Miami the hotbed of of coronavirus right now and and we're kind of surprised that that the baseball team got hammered. I'm surprised that the basketball team has not been. Yeah they've been but they see they're sitting inside that bubble, bubble. those 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 baseball players and that was the, the discussion this morning after I, I turned on the TV and they were discussing did baseball and football are they screwing this up because they're not going inside the bubble because the NHL has had zero, zero. I think, positives in yeah. the last what 10 yeah. or 11 days in basketball exactly is not that far behind so yeah. um, it's going to be interesting to see how things progress but uh, the Marlins take off the entire week They'll miss all seven of their games that they had scheduled for this week. And, of course, it'll be interesting to see how those games might be made up. Well, uh, and they played Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is playing the Yankees, and it just goes on and on. You know, and, and, and a couple of them, they, you know, uh, I'm just... And, of course, for the naysayers out there, and there are many naysayers out there about this disease, the Phillies don't have any positive tests. After all these Miami Marlins players were in Philadelphia yeah. all weekend, the Philadelphia player, Phil, the Phillies right now have no positives, which kind of surprises me. But baseball, you're not so face to face. Yeah, you're 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 a little bit more indirect. So um, I guess that's a good sign for baseball that you can possibly be competitive. But uh, boy, I'll tell you, it can, it can put a 60-game schedule into 
into big flux. How would you like to be a schedule maker in that league right now trying to figure well, you know, out... They're, well, they're talking about going to seven inning double headers, two seven inning games or a nine and a seven just so that they can help the pitching out, kind of like what they do in the minor leagues. Sure. And uh, you were right last week. I, I said I couldn't, didn't know for sure, but yes, they're putting a runner on second base in extra innings and uh, all this other hokey stuff, the DH and the, NA, and the NL cities and all the other stuff. But there was there was there was a positive. Uh, somebody said they love this putting a runner on base in the game between the Dodgers and the Astros because that's the next thing that's going to come up here. Yes, it is. Uh, oh, really? It, went, <laughs> it, it still went to 13 innings. It did. So even putting the runner on second base doesn't mean the game is going to end right away and uh, everything else. So let's talk about the Dodgers and the Astros. And of course, everybody I'm sure aware of what happened uh, with the Astros with their uh, cheating scandal and uh, beating the Dodgers in the 2017 World Series. And there's been a lot of talk, uh, especially back in March and, of course, leading up to this series. And then uh, the other night, uh, Joe Kelly from the Dodgers, the pitcher for the Dodgers, he threw one behind a batter and then uh, hit somebody. Just a little bit outside. Just a little outside. Yeah. And uh, and then then there was the the verbiage the the the, the mocking the he tongue and Carlos. The, the, uh, between Carlos Carrera and himself and found himself with an eight game suspension. Yeah. How do you feel? Well, I'll tell you what. It's because it, I shouldn't say that. You're not going to want to ask me how I feel because Darcy, you might be doing some editing if I get really wound up about this. Well, I'll tell you. This is how his teammates. Um, and I saw a picture of the T-shirt today. They're drawing up T-shirts and it's showing Joe Kelly walking away and they're saying what he said was of course was after Carlos missed the ball and, and was struck out he said nice swing and and of course he said it in a mocking way and I mean it, this was right out of eighth grade playground yeah. uh, you know and so I suspect that you know he probably shouldn't do this although I come to find Joe Kelly has done this kind of thing before. Well, see that here's here's the thing. I mean, he I think he's he's pretty wild from the word go. go. I mean, I don't I don't think yeah he might he might be uh, throw at guys and whatever. Oh else. no, he's wild thing from but the he, get go. He, 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 he's pretty wild from the word yeah. go. So yeah. Here here's my problem with this eight game suspension that they. Put I think it's too long. Oh my lord! It, this is a big chunk of they, the they're, season. They're, it's a twenty one to twenty two game suspension. Yeah. During a oh. during a 162 game season, and game and a fine, do what they did with the managers, you know. And it's just like, and you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, it, you can't throw a Dusty Baker out for eight games. Uh, they're trying to save, make sure Houston well, doesn't they, go under. You know, somebody said that Manfred is trying to make a statement that we are not going to stand for this for the entire 60 game schedule that the Astros are going to get thrown at and whatever else. And frankly, I disagree with that a thousand percent. I, if I can disagree more than a hundred percent, I'm going for a thousand. Because to me, the Major League Baseball didn't take care of business with these guys. They let them do what they did, and they let them keep their trophy, and they let them keep their title. And everybody can say, well, they were cheaters, but they got to keep their title. So baseball, Manfred wouldn't take care of business with the Astros. And now it, he's really showing his true colors, or they're whatever in here, because they're saying, well, well, we're going to take care of the Astros. We're going to protect them. Well, you protected them way too much, and that's the problem. If you would have fined them, if you would have, if you would have taken care of business when you put out the fines in March, none of this crap would be happening, and you wouldn't be having anybody throw at them if they would have been judged accordingly, correctly. But you judge them way too easily, way too nicely, and so there's pe people didn't get their slice of justice. No, and, and I tell and, you, do tell me who is surprised that the Astros are going to dodge a few baseballs. This is well, how I, they play the game in that league, and it's just it was I, going to happen. Yeah, yeah, and that's part of how you take care that, of that, business. That's how you take care of business. Yeah. It's just like the fighting in hockey and whatever else. Yeah. There's, there's those things that we don't like to see, that we don't need, that we don't want. But there there had to be something there, and uh, the eight games is ridiculous. I'm sorry. I. No, I know I, that's that's a I, lot I, of games. I was I was giving I was giving Manfred the benefit of the doubt over yeah. the season being delayed so long. I I, I wanted to make right, but uh, he's lost me now. Uh, he he would have to do something incredible to get me back. Uh, uh, everybody's ticked off at Gary Bettman and what he's done with the NHL for the last twenty plus years or however long it is. 
Uh, man, 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 oh man, it's, it's, I'm going to tell you, I, I will say this, it, uh, it, it, as I was channel flipping with one eye open late in the evening and the, and the Dodgers came up in the 13th inning, that was all right with me. Besides, the Dodgers are a very good baseball team. <laughs> and for me to cheer for the Dodgers is a, yes. is a very much a stretch, but it was very easy to do over the uh, it, couple oh, of games. Oh, no, they... it was, and, I, and I, I think that if this is the way the rest of the teams are going to handle it. I think the Dodgers had a bigger ax to grind they, than, they than most other teams. Oh, not, a year ago, it cost, them, it, it cost them a shot. Yeah, so I, 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 understand, I think that's, that's, this is probably going to be the biggest ax of the grinding that we're going to see. And Joe and, Kelly at one time was with Boston. And so, you know, they, <laughs> there's that deep involvement as well. Anyway. Anyway, I want to do stay with the baseball. Okay. A couple more stories here sure. before we leave baseball. Patrick Mahomes. I know what you're saying no. he's, he's not. A, he's not a baseball guy. Oh yes, he is a Whoa, baseball guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, his, no, his he had he had a contract that he could have he could have gone either way. Yeah, and his dad, of course, pitched for the Twins way back when. the Twins way back when. And now he's a part owner of the Royals. Well, you see, this is what happens when you get a raise. That's what happens when you get a half a billion you dollars could, promised to you. You could make <laughs> investments if you got a substantial raise as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple other things. White Ulrich uh, batting 363 after oh. last night's game. Had a couple, the last couple games have been really good. Got his average back up because it dipped down below 350. Horror of horrors. But uh, Mr. Lark. And uh, we're coming. We're, we're, I'm heading your way, man, and uh, looking forward to it. Uh, so is there a game tomorrow night and Saturday? Game tomorrow night on uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock, and then uh, afternoon night doubleheader. Oh, boy. Double header. Oh, so boy. we got three games in two days to watch. And uh, Looks like the weather should be all right. Yeah, Not it looks like it's going to be maybe in the mid to upper 80s, which yeah. is... A little warm, but you no, know, you, you can you can handle that. I should, I should be able to handle it for a couple of days, as long as I can go sit in the AC afterwards. Yeah. Nineteen U uh, Bronco baseball team uh, regular season is done. They were supposed to play their last game tonight, but uh, Virginia has some school function going on. I don't know what. I didn't get any more details than that. That's the same look heist when they told me. But uh, so their final regular season games are finished. They end the regular season with, with a record of five and ten, and they start the playoffs. Saturday, and we don't know. This is 5:30 in the afternoon on Thursday. We won't know till after all the games are played today whether the Broncos are going to be playing in Ely and or Aurora over the weekend. But that's the playoffs, and uh, we'll see where they sit. And when I talked to uh, Coach Telmage the other day, he was very happy where this team has gotten to. Very slow start to the season, but have been playing some better ball, beat some teams that they lost to earlier in the year. So. Hopefully they can make a run. No, I took my grandsons over on Saturday and watched the second game yeah. and the and the batter. The the first game went went nine innings, which was a couple <laughs> innings longer, and it was about ninety degrees off. Our friend Randy Anderson's out in the outfield, and he comes in, and I I I, I frankly was worried about him. Yeah. Uh, Forty minutes later, after they went out for the second game, I was still worried, still worried. about him. Yeah. But it was hot. The the. Uh, um, uh, uh, Riley Larson came out in, in the in the second game, and um, he he threw it was throwing hard, and then all of a sudden it just kind of melted, <laughs> and, you know. And I, I I was watching the catcher, and you know a, a catcher in hot weather that's that's cruelty, that's that's plain honest cruelty. But my grandsons ran around and shagged um, uh, loose, ball, uh, loose ball balls, balls and fall balls and. And one put him, put him in his pocket. He says, I got two of them. And I, says, <laughs> and, and I looked at the umpire, and the umpire was looking around for a baseball to keep the game going. I says, if you really want to make good friends, you go over and give them those balls, and I'll buy you one. So first thing he says when he comes to, do you get my baseball yet? <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, you know, baseball is great, and there was, you know, it was good to see. It was good to see some of the folks, the kids, know uh, uh, Joey Glowack, and so they were yeah. talking with Joe, and, and uh, you know, so, hey. It was good to see a good, little live game. Good, good, good to see live baseball. Yeah. What should we move to next? I think that that's everything I got for baseball. Well, okay, I, oh, no, it's quite I, a bit. Um, that is quite a bit. Well, what do you got? Oh, I got a. You, you, you want to talk football? Yeah, we talk all the football. Yes, let's talk a little okay. football. Of course, uh, all the players re reported on Tuesday uh, on schedule. Of course, unfortunately, the Vikings are having a little virus. Issue. Yes, they are. <laughs> I believe I believe the number was raised to seven uh -huh. players today that are on the COVID uh -huh. whatever list, and uh, so that tells me that the boys have been out. Uh, 
having some fun, uh, not necessarily doing their social distancing. So uh, they'll, they'll get a, they'll get a little time off before they uh, before they get uh, started with the team. And of course, the the it's not training camp like normal. They're coming in doing lots of conditioning for a couple of weeks. Yes. And uh, before they really actually get to any actual football. But uh, yeah, the Vikes come in and and that's good. Pierce. Uh, Michael Pierce, uh, who came in, who was our kind of our big free agent acquisition, uh, opted out for the season. So the Vikings were looking for a place, you know, a, a body to fill that hole at nose tackle, and uh, now they're going to have to find somebody else to step into that role. And that's a big hole because they've had Johnson and they've had some really good nose guards the yeah. last few years. And uh, NFL football these days, you better have one. Yeah, you got to you got to yeah. plug up the middle yeah. and uh, and see what happens. So uh, yeah. Delvin Cook also reported for he the did. Bucks, which was a surprise to some, not a surprise to others. Sound like the coaches and the ever just figured he was always going to be there. That this whole I'm not gonna I'm gonna hold out thing was a bluff. Um, the, the virus. I think had a, played a part in this. Uh, it has to. It plays uh, a part. The, you, you, just about everything. You, yeah. So we'll see what happens uh, with the Vikes. But uh, like I said, they're gonna have. We'll, we'll see if things get started September 10th. I think it is with the with the uh, Chiefs and uh, whoever they're playing for the life of me. I can't remember right is now. Is that I, the exhibition yeah, game? No. There are no. There are no exhibition there are games. No preseason games. Okay. None. So it's gonna be an interesting first week when they go out and they actually do get to play. Uh, we've we've always I've always hated the first week of football recently because your starters have played about four series and four preseason games, yeah. which is why I didn't want the preseason games anyway. Uh, now they're not going to have any preseason games, so it might even be sloppier, uglier, worse football that first week. But uh, uh, you've coached football for a long time, and you've seen a lot of it at every level. Yeah. And at the beginning of the season, it's sloppy and ugly. Yeah. It's yeah, it's uh, absolutely. So you know, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see what, what happens, happens. Uh, as things go along yeah. there. So, uh, of course, uh, the ACC and Notre Dame. Notre Dame, for yeah. first time in how long? Ever. Ever. Uh, you know, ACC uh, and Notre Dame have had uh, a connection uh, in other sports. Uh, they were part of the Big East for a while, but now the uh, they got involved with football for the first time in the conference, and the ACC going to go to an 11-game season. 10 games in conference, you can actually play one non-conference opponent, but you got to play that game in your home state. Yes. I, 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 Didn't I, know that either. That's kind of, kind of interesting. Yeah. And then the SEC announced today that they're going to do what the Big Ten is doing, a 10-game conference-only schedule, and they're going to start September 26th. So right now, everybody's kind of going in that direction that uh, we're gonna we're not going to play any games till the last week of September type of thing, although the NCAA has given them the right to be able to play right from the 1st of September. But uh, a lot of the conferences now are saying we need to get everybody in. We need to get everybody bubbled up. Uh, if I can if I can use that term for the colleges, get them bubbled in. And, uh, you know, a lot of the, the classes, the University of Minnesota announced today that most of their classes or all of their classes for the fall semester are going to be online. Uh, I talked to one of the kids who's going to UMB uh, from the graduating class here from the falls. They said all his classes were going to be online through UMD. So um, we're, we're, we're seeing more and more of it, but these players are going to be on campus and they're going to see what they can do. I think that's that's the hope because I know we keep saying this, but money talks and uh, uh, that. Well, and that's the way it is with Northern Sun. UMD is going to play, I don't know, what is it? The seven, eight, no, eight, 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 eight game schedule. That's going to start September 26th with Wayne State. Um, they're not going to start practice till well around Labor Day first or so, or, or, huh? or, or thereabouts. And um, uh, but uh, they're coming in to play football. There's no two ways about it. It's uh, yeah. and I still think, folks, as much as these conferences, you know, a couple weeks ago the NSIC said ten games, and then they have cut it down to eight. Don't be surprised when they maybe I don't know if they'll go less than eight. Would they wait and go six? I don't know. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what 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 happens. Uh, it, it's it's still a fluid situation, uh, uh, definitely along the way. Baseball, Major League Baseball is finding that out as they uh, deal they with the sure things are. with Miami. That you 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 got to have a uh, you got to be adaptable. You you, you got to do hopefully what's right and and uh, yeah. It, it, like I said I think it's going to be shorter. I don't think it'll stay at ten games. 
Uh, I know they're hoping to play, but I, I believe this, folks. We're going to have spring football across the board. We're going to have spring football across the board for the big colleges even. I, I just think that that's what's going to happen. Well, uh, that would be more than a little disruptive, but... Uh, <laughs> Would cut into our TV watch. Well, no, but I mean, you, you're going to you're, you're you're going to ask a football team to play in the spring and then the next fall, or are you going to adjust that schedule for lot of, two years, lot, three years? A lot, a lot of. Well, this sounds horrible. I know it sounds horrible. There's a lot of kids that go play spring football. Yeah. I know it's 15 practices or whatever they do, and it's a spring. You know, if you play spring ball, if you start in March and play March, April. And you give them May, June, and July, and part of August off. You know, uh, spring football itself can be more vicious than the season. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying uh, <laughs> people are concerned about playing that close together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, towards the end of the second season, you might have some kids that are starting to wear down. You might see some more injuries, but um, it, hey, if you ask me if I, I'm a football player and you ask me to play football a after in February, let's go. Uh, it's go time. Come on, uh, we're, we're going to go play football. Come on. I, I, yeah, so, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know I, about season either. Is, yeah, are, so. uh, what what season it might be? Yeah, uh, yeah I agree. I, I have played football in the spring, and and uh, uh, you know it's football. It's football. That's Absolutely. football. So we'll see what happens. You got anything else? Football yeah, wise? you know I'll tell you what. I I went and I I was looking at the website at UMD to determine what kind of season they were going to have and what kind of schedule they have. And I look up in the corner, and they have this feature that's a, a podcast, and it's called um, a Bulldog Coffee Break. And I'm looking at Bulldog Coffee Break, and here, uh, the interview that they're doing is a guy that I took a look, and I thought, oh, I know that guy. Well, uh, way back in 1967, a man named Eric Eversley, Eric, came, Eric Eversley. Eversley, he came right. to International Falls as a group of um, a panel of Americans and it was college students that were coming around to all kinds of high schools and and introducing themselves to kids. He says we were from all over the place. We were different, call it different countries, you know, and we, we went around to try to talk to high school kids about kind of what, what was what. And I thought, I know this guy. And uh, uh, about six months later, I'm on the field with him, and because he's the captain of the football oh, team. Okay. So the story for Eric is, is he came from from um, uh, um, Minneapolis Central when there was a Minneapolis Central, 1963. He was a he was he was a football player, basketball player, and a really fine track man. And he was recruited by all kinds of schools, including the Naval Academy and stuff, because he was not only a very good athlete, he was smart. And and uh, you know and he, he didn't he, his his mom and dad weren't master's degrees he come from a single parent home in which mother had a, a, a high school degree and he says but I just had a certain drive okay well I got down there and uh, you know he, he, to hear his story he come to UMD in 1963 there's about six black people on campus there's one person on the football team that's black him. And so you, you take a look and you think, 1963, Eric Eversley at this point, and it's a great day, for, knowing that's John Lewis's funeral, he was on a civil rights journey. He's coming to Duluth. There's about six black people on the whole campus. Now, what does he have to do? Well, Eric had a couple of things going for him. For one, an incessant drive to work and to study. And, and he, he, he did all that. He fell in with Molaski's um, plan of smash mouth football. And he was kind of a halfback. Just if anybody ever said, who is the fastest guy you ever play f football against? He, he, he gets the nod. Sure. And, uh, you know, and so I got there in the fall and he's the team captain. I remember, it, but there was, he was Quiet, soft spoken, no rah rah. But there was there was plenty of idiots on the football team for rah rah, and uh, but he was always seemed like he was 22 years old. He seemed like he was 30. He was always kind of had had this <coughs> mature way about him. Very smart, very disciplined. Like I say on the field, he's very fast. And the fall UMD, 
they had a good football team coached by Jim Miloski, of course. And and the the thing was, oh, it was. Uh, I says Eric was his team captain. Hard to imagine he ever had a better one. But Eric was not a lone running back in this team. And Scott Janander and Lee Christensen were, were double quarterbacks. One could run and one could pass, and they shuffled them back in before. Uh, Eric, by this time, was going both ways as, as a safety and running back. Dick Volsky, who was, was an incredible cruncher, 215, 220 pounds, he went on to um, uh, at least spend some time with the Packers. Um, uh, Jim Mason was this tight, tight end. He was from out east somewhere. Glenn Kelly was from, was from, uh, um, uh, um, was he, was he from uh, Denfeld? Duluth Denfeld. Jerry Brozell, he was from, I don't know, Central City. We had Vern Emerson, who played six years with, with, uh, with the Cardinals. And um, Gary Egerdahl, who was Terry Egerdahl's older brother, he, he, he was about 6'2 and about 220 pounds. He was a halfback. Now, you know if you break through an incredible All-American line and the halfback's coming at you like that, it's, it's, it's not going to work out for you. But he, anyway, I, I, I got a chance to tackle him. And then we had a guy from Little Fork, an All-Stater, Second team All American, that was Neil Ladston, and he, he was an edge rusher. And, and uh, he, he could get his head slapped quicker than anybody I know. My ear still rings. <laughs> but Eric was also, he was, he was the counselor. We stayed at, at uh, Old Main. I don't even think it's there anymore. We stayed in Torrance Hall. Torrance Hall was the cheapest dorm on campus, which means it was chuck full of football players. And, they, and Eric was down there to control this. Uh, Mayhem? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say mob, but but uh, it, it, it really didn't matter. But he, you know, I mean, even when he, you know, this was this was a very he had to, all he had to do was maintain. And I got some stories about that that probably wouldn't I shouldn't say. Are anyway. aren't appropriate for this family. No, but I mean, these were all these were all good boys, and some of these guys are still my some of my friends. But Eric was so smart, and he was a history major. And he sat down one evening, and I asked him a question about the Battle of the Coral Sea, and I got a 45-minute lecture on naval battle. And I was just stunned. This is from my football captain. I couldn't believe it. So, but he, he, he was really an amazing guy. He went down, back down to, to um, Minneapolis Central, and he taught and coached. And then he had an opportunity to go to Colorado and get a master's degree, which he did, and goofed around out there. Came back to Minnesota. Um, uh, Al Green, who was who was just a legendary school superintendent at Minneapolis, talked him into applying for a grant at Harvard, and and uh, and Eric Eversley went out and got a doctorate in, in in education, and and from that point in time became a leading educating in the country. And I just you know once in a while I just think some of these guys really do well because they're extremely talented coming in. Right now, they did, a, did the thing on, he lives on the coast of, of central Oregon, the coast of central, coastal Oregon, he said. But, uh, uh, you know, we all wanted to please, we all wanted to please Miloski so much. He was such a great guy. And, and to disappoint Miloski was, it's, it's a terrible thing to do. <laughs> and, and, and we always wanted his acknowledgement. And I just, I just said, Dr. Eversley, I know the coach has got to be really proud of you. Eric, sure. is in, Eric is in the UMD Hall of Fame as of 2006. Um, but I, I, I bring this up primarily to, to, to relive some of this stuff. But go to that UMD website do um, the coffee break. They have all the coaches on that uh, on uh, at UMD staff, and they um, uh, they ask them a lot of questions. These people come from all over the place. And they're pretty talented group of coaches. So um, that's what I did. I wasn't looking for that to happen, but you have now there you a description it. of uh, of Eric Eversley. What sport would you like to go to next? Uh, we can go NBA. We haven't right. gone there. NBA gets started today as a Thursday. A couple of games. Ah. Uh, your buddy Zion Williamson, who uh, 
went out of the bubble, came back in, had a quarantine himself, blah, blah, blah. Is he going to play? Uh, they said he will play in short spurts tonight because he hasn't, they don't think he's physically fit enough. And somebody on ESPN <laughs> said yesterday, he just turned 20. Well, yeah. How long does it take a 20-year-old to get in? He he's ready to go. Let him. Uh, I, I think they're going to let the big dog eat a little bit, as I, as I, I like to say. I, I think the air, too. Uh, so uh, the, the Clippers and the Lakers, I think, are going to get started about now. I, that is going to be a heck of a I think, heck of a I think as, we're, as, as we're in the middle of this uh, recording session here, I think they're getting started. And then uh, the Pelicans and, for heaven's sake, And I, the Jazz. And the Jazz, thank you. Yeah. I couldn't come up with it. And uh, so they play. And, of course, the uh, WNBA got started last week. They did. And uh, the... The uh, Lynx didn't look good the first couple of quarters. I, I actually turned it off. I, I couldn't watch it anymore. They were upsetting me. And then they came back in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Outscored uh, uh, 27 to 12 in the uh, fourth quarter to get the win. And then I watched a little bit of the game on Tuesday night and they looked worse. Uh, Seattle's probably the one of the best teams, teams in, around, the, in, yeah. the, in the NBA with Brianna Stewart and uh, Sue Bird in the lineup. And uh, when uh, Karima Christma, Christmas Kelly ruptured her Achilles tendon that hurt. in the uh, end of the first quarter, early second quarter, uh, that hurt the hurt the uh, Lynx. And, and I'm uh, sure she's done for the season. She's done for the season. Yeah. So they got Chicago tonight, and we'll see what happens. This is a team that's still trying to rebuild itself. Sylvia Fowles becomes the uh, WNBA's all-time leading rebounder uh, in the game the other night. So. Congratulations to her, but uh, the, the Lynx got some work to do, and of course we don't really have the Timberwolves to talk about. No, we uh, don't. Because uh, they didn't weren't one of the top 22 teams. So On the other hand, we got the Wild. We got the Wild to talk about. Let's uh, talk a little hockey. The uh, game was on yesterday afternoon, which oh. I didn't realize it was. A, I thought it was going to be an evening game, and yeah. I wasn't going to get to watch any of it. I got. I I watched the first period, took a nap during the second period and watched parts of the third period and uh, all the scoring basically was done in the first 25 minutes of the game as they uh, lost to Colorado 3-2 to two, and Devin Dubnik looked good in he did. goal. Yeah. Uh, Stalock, I won't say he looked bad. They, the defense didn't help him out but uh, did give up the three goals and uh, they asked Dean Evison, the head coach, if who was his starting goaltender and he said, well, I'm not sure and then gave a sly smile which to me means that Dubnik, Dubnik is, is going is to get, get the start on Sunday against Vancouver. And again, this is going to be uh, working on our sleep cycle because uh, yes. it, it, we're, we're going to be up late watching the Wild as they play out in Edmonton. And then I believe two of their three games are in the are late at night. One is in the afternoon. In the, the in late night system. games are what, 10 30, 11 30? They're I late. 9 30, they start okay. our time, I think, is what we're looking at. So uh, that starts on Sunday night, and then I think they play Sunday, Tuesday. Catch a whole Thursday. period before you fall asleep. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to be that's gonna be the problem. So we'll see. I may have to try to nap up so I can watch. There you uh, go. Especially the first game on yeah, Sunday. You, you clear that with Eli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See if you can sneak that nap in yeah. there. And of course, uh, St. Thomas, uh, University of St. Thomas found out officially yesterday that they are a member of the CCHA. The oh, that's going to be a good good, huh? Yeah, that's a good thing for them. They It was kind of a foregone conclusion, but they didn't announce it, what uh, they were going to be in a couple weeks ago when they announced everything else. Uh -huh. But it was just kind of formalities. They had to dot some I's and cross some T's and get things done. But uh, yeah, that'll make uh, Division One team number six in the state of Minnesota. And of course, now Bemidji's got kind of an uh, in-state rival. Yes, they do. And uh, I was thinking about that too. Bemidji's, you know, they want to fill that arena up once in a while. And if you got a whole, I mean, Tommy's, they're generally fanatical. They, I, I, oh, that was I was gonna I was gonna use the word nuts. Yeah, that's like a, you're gonna use fanatical. Oh yeah, like, nuts hey, is nuts is good. And thinking of St. Thomas <laughs> made me think of St. John's with Mitch. We made me think of Jay Barkowski, and I mentioned Jay last week on the show, and I'm gonna mention it to you again, Jay. Your Cardinals got swept by my twins or our twins. Uh, yeah, so, they got uh, hammered. Nice, nice, uh, nice job by the uh, Cards. <laughs> After last week, I told you that they were gonna win the the National League Central. Uh, they had to lose those two games to the Twins, of course. So. Those poor uh, pitchers are seeing those baseballs coming right at them. So the uh, playoffs get started uh, Saturday and Sunday with the uh, NHL. So they'll be uh, getting into the full swing of things. And uh, like I said, it's, it's going to go quick because some of these teams are going to get eliminated within the first week and they'll be heading home. Uh, other teams will be, uh, they're going to get it down to eight teams on each side. 
and then uh, we'll get the actual Stanley Cup playoffs started uh, about August 17th. Well, no, like the NBA games, are, these are all towards a different playoff? The, the NBA games right now are the end of the regular the season. season, so okay. they're, they're trying to get everybody to an equal number of games. Okay. And they brought in the teams that were in like 9th, 10th, 11th place so that they can bring these teams in so they all can see who has a chance to get to 8th. So I wrote it down here somewhere in my notes. of mess. The playoffs start August 17th for the NBA. That's the 17th I'm thinking of. So the, all these preliminary games or end of season games are going to be played now and kind of get everybody to whatever number of games it is and then they'll uh, they'll get everybody through and uh, they'll get 16 teams and who Listen, knows? I, 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 we've been so roughshod with sports. I'll watch anything. I can't wait to watch this game between the Clippers and the, and the Lakers tonight. It's going to be a dandy. Well, in the, in the, I, I have to admit, most lots of you people who watch this show or watch my previous show know that I have two TVs in the basement side by side. Uh, <laughs> the other night when the Lynx and the, and the Twins and whatever else was on, uh, I had both TVs on and I was still flipping. I needed a third TV really to kind of keep up. Uh, that's where so my I, computer comes up. So yeah. That's a good feeling, folks. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Yes, I could have probably started my phone and had the third one kind of sitting here like this, but that, yeah, it's it, it's, a, it's a good feeling to, to have those problems. It is. For lack of a better term. It is. Uh, got to talk about the Loons. Got to talk about Minnesota you United. And uh, last week when we were here, we knew that they had, had made it into the playoffs, but they were getting Columbus who was being deemed the team to beat in the uh, ML MLS's back tournament. And uh, the uh, Loons looked pretty doggone good on Tuesday night. Uh, they did give up a penalty kick to tie at 1-1, and then they won on PKs, uh, penalty kicks, uh, by 5-3. to three. No overtime, which was good, I thought. Got me to bed a little bit sooner. Sure. And uh, But the uh, Loons are off to the uh, round of eight, so they're into the quarterfinals, and they get San Jose on uh, Saturday night at 7 o'clock. So... While I'm hopefully sitting at a baseball game in Bismarck, North Dakota, I'll maybe have you'll my have phone that on thing working, yeah, and, and, and watching a little a uh, little bit of the loons and uh, see what they see if they can get into the final four. They got a nice club, and did you know this kid Ethan Finley? Did, did, did oh, you know I, he was from Duluth? Yes, I did not know that. I forgot. Yes, yeah, so, that, that, he and he's yeah he's he's one of the best uh, soccer players Minnesota's ever turned out, and it's. Uh, and I guess he's really just f a fun person on the team. I, they've had a couple of write-ups about him. Yeah. Uh, of course, this afternoon it was announced uh, from Governor Walls about school, and they've got a they've actually got a formula and a chart that they're supposed to be following. Yeah. Uh, to see if you can have school. Um, Does that chart tell you whether there's going to be football? No, because that's coming up uh, on Tuesday. So we that you know and somebody talked to me today and said. Well, if school's in session, then then the game, then the team, then they can play. And I'm like, oh no 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 no. Uh, no. Necessarily. And somebody no. said, well, if they aren't in school, they can't play. And I'm like, no 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 no. You you you're, you're you're mixing the two things up. This tells us about school. The state high school is going to come out on Tuesday, August 4th, and they're going to tell us what they think about football. And I noticed that the state Star Tribune told us that 23 states have delayed the start of their fall football season, fall seasons. And yeah. the question becomes. Is this what the uh, what the Emma Minnesota State High School League is going to do on Tuesday? Are they going to say, "Yep, we can play sports, but we're going to delay everything to see how things go," or are they going to cut it off and say, "No, it's not safe"? Um, and again, they're in a no-win situation. The school oh, there's no good choice. The, 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 the school district say, I, after I see what came out today, and I didn't get to read through everything as I was out busy uh, with Eli on the lake today, but. Uh, I did get to get through and see this formula, and if I did the math quickly, and I did the math very quickly, uh, I did a kind of an estimate. In the last 14 days, give me your estimate. How many people in Kuchichin County have come down with, have been tested positive with the virus in the last two weeks? The last two weeks? 20? Yeah, I would guess 20. Okay, so you got to take 20 and divide it by the number of people in Kuchichin County, right. which is about 12, 12 to 14,000. And you got to divide that by 10,000. So take, let's call it 1.3. So take 20 and divide it by 1.3, which comes out to about 15. Yeah. That 15 would tell us that our elementary school kids are going to be in school yes. all day. Yes. With their precautions, wearing their masks, and the school high schools will be in a hybrid version. But as we get closer to school, uh, that will do will dictate what I think what we're doing. That's the way I'm interpreting it. I could be wrong. 
if I'm reading that wrong, don't. That was my quick read on things. Uh, so the school board is meeting on Monday, the third, uh, to talk about this and see where we're going. And I, they'll have an official number by then, and they'll kind of get everything straightened away for us. So uh, it's going to be an interesting thing. Like I said, there's a there's a formula that we're going to get to follow to see. So uh, right now. I guess I'm going to have to come up, right now I would think that I'm coming up with a hybrid version. How am I going to have some of the kids in school, not some of the other kids, uh, and, and going on? So, so as a classroom teacher, what you have to work through is how I'm, how I'm going to do it, not necessarily whether um, you're yeah. in danger of doing it. Yeah, 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 I don't think that's, that, I don't. Yeah, you want to that, coach football, that, what that, are you worried that's, about that's, danger? That's, that's not in my uh, whatever, yeah. and, I, and I'm, I'm fine that it's not in there. I'll. Uh, I'll go do what we got to go do. Of course, yeah. I'd love to have the kids all the time. That's the way things should be done. But uh, I've got some thoughts about how we'll do this hybrid version, and <laughs> and uh, they're gonna. They've already had a group of teachers and administrators and uh, custodial staff and whatever else in discussing how they're going to do these things. I'm going to let them tell me what to do, and then I'm going to make my plan. And we'll go from there. Well, it's too bad, you know, like you can't throw erasers over the over the computer. Yeah. Get these. Yeah, we well, are yeah. sleeping. Yeah. You yeah. Can't tell if they're yeah they're you napping. So. They're napping. So now that now this is our final show before the decision by the state high school uh -huh. is going to be made. Uh -huh. what, what, what's your prediction? Um. What do you think's going to what What do they think they're going to say? Go ahead and play. Are they going to delay? I think as long, as, as, long no. as, as long as they're doing the D2 colleges and the colleges, I think it's difficult to say we can do this at that level and not at the high school, at least the high school varsity level. I see then the Division three schools are shutting down and, and not playing. So Well, you know, and I think they're in a little bit different deal because they're a private school. And a lot of times, you know, you send their kid away to private school to become safe if nothing else and uh, you know and it's 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 just a little bit different priority now I still think it comes down to the question even if we can should we uh, this is has to come somewhere else um, but I, I I just know that if you told all, all the football players 90 percent of them would line up to draw their equipment that's kind of yeah, we've uh, we've had some kids uh, had have shown up, not shown up uh, as we've had our practices over the last couple of weeks, and uh, there is obviously some of them are very concerned about it. Others, I don't. Other kids are like, doesn't matter to me. Let's go. Let's go out. And no, do this. I talked to them a couple on Saturday. They that's that's not their concern. Yeah, they are. They they, they want to play football, and uh, like I said, there there there's there's the whole spectrum, and it's a it's a tough situation. Uh, you know, I, I run around. At football practice, with a mask around my wrist, so that if I have to, I can put it on. Or if I got to walk into the building with the kids, I can put it on. And uh, it's, you know, I'm used to having a whistle around my neck and carrying a clipboard and whatever else. Having a mask around my wrist, so I have it at a moment's notice, uh, is 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 different. It is. It's very it's, it's strange. Not, not, not normal uh, football coaching it, attire. It, it really is. But uh, it is what it is, and. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got made me think of one more thing. I was watching the Wild uh, or, or Pittsburgh in Philadelphia actually the day before uh, during their exhibition game, and it was in Toronto. And in between periods, they had the people out there, and they were all gowned up in their masks, and they were cleaning the bench areas, oh boy. mopping and wiping everything down. And I'm like, wow, even even in between, they're taking that big of precautions. So uh, the, obviously, the NHL, like I said, they've got zero uh, positives and. I, they're, they're taking it quite serious. So they are. What else? What? What? What else? You, you got this? Uh, you, you got your T-shirt on that we got to talk oh, yes. about. We have to talk this about. This is. That. These are the Polars. The Polars. No, you, where would you think the Polars are from? Well, I would think some 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 place in northern Minnesota or the northern United States. But all the writing on there is in is in Mexican uh, or if in Spanish. It, if so. it said La Cerveza, if I knew what Cerveza was, I would have a better grasp of this. Well, like anything else, the Polars were a team in 1953-1954 that won the Cuban national ah. title. And so these, you know, and a lot, of, a, a lot of baseball teams, I mean, Bush had a baseball team, Paps had a baseball team. Uh, you know, they all, a lot of them have baseball teams. Coors has a baseball team. Well, these were the Polars. Now, I'm not sure whether or not the Polars survived the revolution, but um, I found it just interesting as can be that in Cuba, they could have polars, and look at that, 
Got a polar bear got right a polar there. Polar bear right there. And he looks and he looks thirsty. So he wants whatever this cerveza is, and it's cerveza, cerveza of the public, la cerveza the public of the yeah, public. public yeah. yeah. So um, I'm gonna see if we have any here, and we'll 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 we'll, we'll give that a try. But next week I have a surprise in terms of t-shirts. Next week a surprise. I think we're going to shoot for Thursday. I believe that we have football practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So we're going to stick okay. with this uh, Thursday situation. Yeah. I, 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 like I said, I know no, our, I am. Don't I know, I know our uh, edit, film editor, she, she much rather has us doing this on Thursday rather than Fridays. Ah, Darcy, she's beauty. And then, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, if we do have a football season, we, we really can't do this on Friday night because We'll be busy. Well, you will. What am I going to do? Well, you're going to be there watching, ain't you? Well, if they let me in. <laughs> Aren't you? Ain't you? <laughs> ain't you? Uh, yeah, well, I ain't going to miss it. Hey, know. if they let us play, you're going to. I know you have your car parked down by the end zone at about one in the afternoon, making sure that you have your spot. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be. It. There's another thing. If they have sports, will you will you be able to come in and watch them yeah. play? Or is it going to be something that will have to be uh, through the radio station with uh, KCC TV and uh, working with a video, uh, all that stuff? So if we yeah. can rig it up on on TV, I'll I'll provide my own play by. Uh, oh. <laughs> and I just you know it was like one of the things where uh, going back to my friend Eric Eversley, every Saturday night after we get done with a football game, he would go down and do Channel Six Sports, and he'd come he'd come in after getting all beat up. And sometimes, just after yeah. we got all beat up, and he'd put on a suit and he'd come in and do the sports. All the guys in the team, we were all sitting around, hey, on, and it would it mostly to give him grief about when he screwed up because, but he didn't care. Uh, but we, we we watched him do that. So one other thing about about Eric, the very first scrimmage I got in at UMD, and I'm I'm nervous, and these guys are so good, and and I I, I kind of break in a gap, and I see the halfback coming. And I know that I can get him, and he kind of just stepped over me. And the only thing I could do was reach up and grab his face mask and just pull Ooh. it down. And that was that was Eric Eversley, and I that was my first college tackle. It was a <laughs> it was a good one. It was a but everybody saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything else? No, I can't think of anything. Uh, a lot of baseball tonight. Watch the Twins. Go Twins. Go Wild. Go Twins. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go loons uh, on Saturday night, and uh, hopefully we're when we come back next week, we're talk we're we're continuing these good conversations about our about our teams. Yes, so. that would be fun. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye.